Hi, welcome to Science with Wes. Today we're continuing our study of habitats and we're going to be talking about food cycles. Before we do that, let's talk about where does our energy come from. If you take a look at the pyramid that's up on the screen, this is a pyramid of energy. And at the top of that pyramid are the things that we would consider to be the top of the food chain. These are the animals that eat everything else below them. And they have very few, if any, natural predators. You've got a lion, a shark, a heron, a polar bear, and you don't find many things that are actually hunting those animals. Where do they get their energy from? They get them from eating other animals. And if we take a look down below the pyramid, they eat pretty much all of those other animals except for the vegetation and plants at the very bottom. And so their energy, the top, the top animals, the, their energy comes from eating lots of the animals below them. They're getting very little energy and they have to eat a lot in order to get that energy. Well, the animals that are below, where does their energy come from? Well, we've got a raccoon, some mice, a crab, and a crow. Where does their energy come from that they need in order to live? Well, they get it from two sources. One, the animals that are below them, and the plants and vegetation that are at the bottom. So that's where they're getting their energy from, and they have to eat quite, quite a bit of that. Um, they're getting more energy than the top tier animals are. Well, the third row is going to be what we call herbivores. And those are animals that don't eat other animals. What they do is they eat vegetation and plants. That's where they get their energy from. So you've got the goose, the zebra, the grasshopper, the deer, and then you've also got the fish. And they're getting their energy from the most abundant source of energy here on planet Earth, and that would be plants and vegetation. We've got grass, and we've got algae, and we've even got plankton there as well. Well, where does grass and vegetation and plankton, where does it get its energy from? Well, it gets it from the sun. The sun is the source of all energy on Earth. So when the sun is giving energy to the Earth, the majority of it is being taken in by vegetation. There is more vegetation than there are animals on planet Earth. And so the majority of that energy goes into the plants, which produce their own food. They produce their own food through the sun's energy, through photosynthesis. They also use carbon dioxide in the air, and they also use nutrients in the soil and we'll talk about where the nutrients in the soil come from shortly. So what I've done is I've cleaned up our pyramid so that we have less animals to look at so that we can think this through a little bit better, a little bit more clearly. We have the sun producing energy and most of that energy is being taken in by the plants and vegetation and that's going to be our grass down below and because it's producing its own food through the sun's energy, we're going to call them producers. They produce their own food. That would be all plants and all vegetation. Well, what eats and what gets energy from all of that, all those plants and all that vegetation? Well, they would be the first things to consume them. And so we're going to call the grasshopper the first order consumers. All the animals on earth are consumers. They consume energy. But the first order are the ones that eat grass. We're going to call them herbivores. They only eat plants. Well, what eats the first order consumers? Well, we have second order consumers. And so we're going to call those mice here. The second order consumers eat both the first order consumers and the producers or the plants. Next, we have energy be being taken in by the heron which is going to be eating the mice and the grasshoppers, but not the producers, they're carnivores. Carnivores are animals that only eat other animals, and we'll call them third order consumers. Sometimes they're going to be herons here. Uh, I could have also put in a bear as well. 
anything that would eat the animals down below. But what happens when one of these animals or plants die? They're not laying around in the forest. Otherwise, our forest would be filled with dead deer and dead animals and dead trees. But we don't find that. They're gone. Where are they? Well, we also have scavengers and decomposers here. The scavengers, in this case, is going to be the raccoon, is an animal that eats dead animals and breaks down their carcass so they're not just laying around. And they'll rip off the big pieces of meat and they'll eat them and then they'll poop them out and, and those will become nutrients uh, for uh, new producers. We also have decomposers. When something has been broken down into uh, from big animals into smaller chunks, that would be the scavengers, we then have the decomposers who come take the smaller chunks and break them down into basic nutrients. And so there we have flies and mushrooms and worms. And you'll often find flies buzzing around dead animals that you might find outside. And what they do is they take the small bits of flesh and they break them down into nutrients. And those nutrients are then returned into the soil, which means that the producers now have another source of food. So they're getting energy from the nutrients, and they're also getting energy from the sun. And it's going around in a big cycle. I'll draw those arrows for you right now so you can see what this cycle looks like. We've got the sun giving energy to the producers, the producers giving energy to the first order consumers, who are also giving energy to the second order consumers, giving energy to the third order consumers. Then third order consumers are being taken in by the scavengers and decomposers. And we'll put them together. And we've got the second order consumers also giving energy to the scavengers and decomposers and more energy being given to the scavengers and decomposers. And dead producers uh, that'll have mushrooms growing in them and uh, insects or uh, flies growing inside them, uh, they'll actually have uh, energy be being given to them as well. Um, and then once that's been broken down into its smallest possible pieces, it's then returned as nutrients to the soil so that producers now have a new source of food. And so you've got, once the sun's energy has reached the earth, you've got this cycle of food going around and around and around. That's what a food cycle is. It distributes all the energy from the sun.